Hey friends, it's Johnny here. I'm really excited to share with you this latest project we did, this 16 foot diameter greenhouse zone. First, I do wanna say that Mila and I have a huge announcement, so stick around to the end of the video to see where life is taking us next and what we are gonna build and where. So the last project we did was the 20 foot zone in Hawaii that had you know real roof on it and everything. So for this greenhouse, I was thinking that we would do the beveled method where we would cut all the dihedral angles and do it sort of like a dome. But the more that I thought about it, the more that I realized that it just wasn't worth it to do the beveled frame, even in the scenario that we're looking at. Now I've done both ways and in my plans, it has instructions for doing it in both ways, but I ended up figuring out a way to use this black aluminum flashing that made a really nice looking detail while simplifying the process so much. Now the other benefit of this method is that all the waterproofing details are mechanical. Nothing is relying on sealant or caulk or tape or anything in this setup. And that's a huge advantage of the zones. One of these days I'm gonna make an in-depth video about the pros and cons between the domes and the zones, but I'm really loving the zones lately. Especially when combined with this no bevel method, because that's kind of the biggest drawback of the zone, is if you're gonna do the beveled method, there's a ton of different dihedral angles. It's not like the zones where you can just cut one. So we did build this zone from our plans, which you can find on my website, trilliumdomes.com. Now I have updated all the zone plans to give you the option to use the beveled method or the non-beveled method. So if you've got the zone plans already and you want the updated version, just shoot me an email. Now this zone does use the more costly crystal clear polycarbonate, which looks great, and it is a little bit more expensive. The overall cost of materials for this zone, including the polycarbonate, the door, the flagstone, everything like that was about $5,000. It could certainly be done for a lot cheaper if you use less expensive material. We recently also just added an equipment and materials page to our website. You can also find the links to those in the description of this video. So stick around as I walk you through this build. We had a really fun time with it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer the best I can. So the first thing we're doing is just cutting everything to rough length. These two by sixes will end up being ripped into four struts. And I do that instead of buying two by twos at the lumber yard because they end up being way too warped. When I build greenhouse frames, I like to use a deck sealer. So you can see me spraying it on right here and rubbing it in with rags. Now that all my exposed edges are finished, I can rip everything to its final dimension. I built this zone from my very own plans that you can find on my website, and it has all the angles, measurements, and dimensions that you'll need. It's pretty important to double and triple check all your measurements, especially in the beginning when you're creating the stops for your repetitive cuts. So to get started making our panels, find your miter angle and cut two struts with that miter angle on it. Arrange them on the table the way they're supposed to fit and clamp them down. Now you can pull a measurement for your total side length, make a mark, and now you know that that's your long to short measurement. So when you line this mark up with your saw, you can just set a stop block on the other side of the strut and repeat the cut as many times as you need, double checking as you go. And because all the struts are identical, you can just make the cut, push it against the stop block, make another cut, and you're done. Once you have your first four struts cut, I think it's a good idea to put one panel together, take some measurements, and make sure that it looks good. If you're having some trouble getting the struts to line up, one thing you can do is start screwing them together a little shy of the mark and let the screw pull it flush. So 
So for this project, we used ridiculously large polycarbonate sheets, uh, mostly because I found a source for them. So let me know if you're looking for some, I can help you get it. Um, these were six foot two wide by 50 feet long, which is quite a bit too much material to handle with just two people. So next time I'm definitely gonna keep it to 12 feet long by six feet wide. And because the zone panels are parallelograms, when you have a really long sheet like this, it's incredibly efficient because as you line them up with each other, they just basically create one long rectangle. But before you start tracing anything, you're gonna wanna make sure that you put a brace on the panel. All you need to do is pull the mid-length measurement that's found on the plan and then once that's right, stick a brace on it so it doesn't move. That just makes sure that it's the right shape so that when you're tracing out for your polycarbonate, everything's gonna be right. And when you put the polycarbonate on, it's actually gonna triangulate the frame as well. So this stuff is really easy to work with. I just use a 60 tooth circular saw blade and you can cut it with a jigsaw too if you need to get finer details. But there's not much more to it than that. You just trace it and cut it. Okay, so using that braced piece, I set these two blocks on my table. That's really useful because I can use these to screw the frame into and hold the panel to its true dimension while I screw the polycarbonate in. And because I know the polycarbonate is the exact right size, I can just line it up with the frame and then slip the flashing underneath it. This happens on the bottom side of the panel so that when you attach the frames together, that flashing goes over the polycarbonate of the panel below it. So everything will lap over each other. In this case, I just pre-drilled and used short roofing screws with little rubber grommets on them. And that's basically the whole scheme for the structure. It's pretty incredible how simple it is. The only other notable flashing detail is on the top struts for the top panels. On one side, we put a flashing piece that will span that seam. So we basically just attached it on one side and then once the zone was all together, we went up on a ladder and attached the other side to the connecting panel. It's important to note that this piece of flashing goes over the polycarbonate, not under. So I made a template for my windows and I simply just cut it out of the polycarbonate, framed around it with two by twos, and then made the windows and installed them after the zone was all the way up. More on that in a bit. So to allow for a proper doorway in a structure like this, usually you create some half panels and then you can frame it out with something light and strong like plywood. So to make these half panels, I simply make a whole panel and then using the numbers and the plans, I make a strut that goes in the middle and then I just trace that, cut off the excess and put it together. Now the easiest way to give yourself a space to frame in your doorway is to use two pieces of plywood. These dimensions are given on the plans. You don't have to use plywood. You could make this out of polycarbonate and framing or glass or any kind of material. This also gives you something to attach your awning roof to. Speaking of the door, there's a few different options. You can either make your own or you can buy an existing one. I personally like these black storm doors. They have a retractable screen. So I'll pick these up and then build my own door jam. So I have a kind of a pre-hung door and then I can just drop it in place when I need to. So a simple solution for ventilation for any zone or dome is these solar powered ventilation fans. They're really cool because it's one self-contained unit and you can set the thermometer to automatically engage when it's too hot. Now the last thing we gotta do in the shop before putting the zone together are the base sections. Now these are pretty simple with the zone. It's just a long to long measurement. So we can set a stop block and make these repetitive cuts. Since this is going straight on packed gravel, I'm using pressure treated for the bottom section of it. 
All right, moving day is here. It's time to load up and take everything to site. The site preparation is pretty simple for a greenhouse like this. If you're going to do some kind of stone patio like we did, um, you really just excavate about four or five inches of earth and you tamp four or five inches of packed gravel. Then you can lay the zone frame straight on that gravel you anchor it to the ground and you can set your flagstone or patio inside of it. Now, of course, you can also put these zones on wooden decks or concrete foundations and you can find all the specs you need to build that for these structures in the plans as well. So the first thing we do for the zone is lay out the base. We'll attach the sections to each other and then pull outside measurements and stake it along the outside so that we can make sure it stays in the right place. Then you start spreading the panels around, basically just working your way from the bottom up. At this stage, it's nice to have a couple of screw guns and some extra hands if you've got them. Quick clamps also come in handy big time. So grab some friends and some ladders because this is the fun part. So when I'm anchoring a structure into gravel like this, I like to use these helical screws. There's a few different options, but these are pretty easy. They have an attachment so that you can drill straight down into the ground pretty far, and then you can use some structural screws to anchor this piece of hardware into the base of the structure, and that prevents it from getting pulled up by the wind. Framing up the doorway is pretty easy too. These pieces that we cut in the shop just kind of drop into place on either side of this opening. And then you can put your awning on top of that. This also gives you the space to drop your pre-hung door or to build your door frame. Because the client had an upcoming event, she opted for us to not install the door at this time, but it's ready for whenever she does want it. So now that the zone was put together, we had some friends work on a flagstone patio while we were building the garden shelves and the windows. The garden shelves are really simple too. It's just a frame with some cedar on top and two legs that go down to the base of the zone. It's supported on the back by a French cleat, which is basically just two interlocking angled pieces of wood. I made the legs angle toward the base of the zone so that you don't have to worry about the elevation of the flagstone or the patio when calculating the length of the legs. And all these measurements are in the plans as well. So here you can see I'm ripping the French cleat. It's just a piece of plywood ripped at a 45 degree angle and then attached to a ledger board. You can see how it works here. You've got the ledger board with the French cleat attached to it and the other side of the French cleat attaches to the shelf and so then they hook together. Here you can see the French cleat attached to the shelf and you can see kind of how the legs go. Back on site, installing the shelves is as easy as attaching the ledger, hanging the shelf, and setting the legs. The French cleats work so good, it hangs without legs too. These shelves ended up being extremely strong. I jumped up and down on them with no issues. And you can make as many sections as you want. You could wrap the whole thing, you could just do shelves in a portion of the zone, or you can make some removable. So for the windows, I just made a frame to fit my cutout from before. 
slip some flashing underneath the polycarbonate, attached some hinges, and hung it in the opening. I use these automatic greenhouse openers that use a wax piston, and they basically just automatically open whenever it gets too hot, and they're somewhat adjustable as well. So the only other thing left to do was to go around and attach the bottom part of the flashing to the adjoining panel. I'm really not sure that this was necessary as the flashing would have functioned anyway. It does add a little bit of a structural element, which I liked, so we did it. So that's basically the build. I love the way it turned out and I love how simple it is without having to cut any compound bevels or dihedral angles. I really think this build is approachable for a lot more people and I would encourage you to give it a try, even if it's just a scaled down version. The crystal clear polycarbonate really takes it to the next level and this is greenhouse on a rainy day is a magic like I've never experienced before. It's incredibly beautiful. Okay, so I said we had a big announcement and it's very exciting and kind of a totally different path than the one that we've been on so far. So we decided to buy a liveaboard sailboat. Um, we've been trying to figure out some land stuff up here in the Pacific Northwest for a while and it just hasn't been working out. And one of our biggest dreams has been to sail around the world and now we're gonna do it. We're super excited about this. Uh, it's a way to pull together both of our big passions for building and my lifelong passion for sailing. So the plan is to sail and travel on the boat and look for projects along the way. So the YouTube video, the Instagram content, everything about building new interesting designs is all still full tilt. I mean, we're going for it. So we're heading to Grenada in October, and uh, after we get settled in, we will be looking for places to come and, and help with projects. Uh, we've got a couple in the works already, which yep. is super exciting. If you have not reached out to us, and you're in that part of the world and you'd like to, give us a shout. Chances are we might be around. Yeah, so that's the big update. And, um, you know, more details will come out as we go. I'm really excited about all the amazing people that we're going to meet and all the natural building and the alternative building that we're going to get to experience and learn about and share with you guys. And to everybody who has supported us through, you know, buying the plans and asking us for consultation and everything like that, we really, really appreciate your support. Um, so much, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's absolutely huge. And let's go. I gotta catch a fish.